Good morning. It is Friday the 29th. Um, January's done. We're, we're a month into 2021. And uh, it, like I said in the last recording, it, it, it's amazing how quite quick this went. I'm completely surprised how fast this went. So far, it's been a phenomenal month. Over 100 transactions closed this month. We appreciate the trust. We appreciate people backing us up. Uh, and just wanted to let you know the calls that you get from us where we need to update information. We got to call you about a document you gave us that now created more, more requirements. We have a very detailed world we live in. We, it's not something we enjoy. Everything you hate to give us, we hate to read. Just know we don't, we don't love having you chase paperwork. Drives us insane to have to pick it up and call. In fact, sometimes because of the relationship that we may have you know, between the processor and you, the borrower or the seller, sometimes because of the reactions people get, they delay the call. I mean, if, we, if we, everybody was just jumping in there and helpful, things would happen much quicker. I'm not saying that people aren't. You're saying that there's those that sometimes push back in a way that makes people pause a little bit before they make that call. I'm encouraging everybody on my team, make the call, make the call, make the call. I don't care how they respond on the other side. Know that it needs to be made and let's continue to keep pushing the need here because we got to get the deal done. Our whole interest is making sure that you have a closed transaction because we know this is the greatest asset in your real estate investment portfolio, the financing itself. If you don't understand why, Let's talk about that. Maybe I'll go back over it. I have videos about that. If this is new to you, shoot me a uh, comment. I will go back and comment on this because there's a reason why this is the greatest asset associated with your deals is not debt and needs to be handled a certain way. But we have to go through a lot of steps to ensure you get this. So let's talk about what's going on this last month, uh, this last week, actually. It's been a, pretty, a lot of information came out this week. I can't go over all of it. There's a ton of economic data that came out. But... What we're, we're seeing is comments from, from, the, uh, from the Fed talking about how that the growth in recent months has been very moderate is what the claim is. And that he's opened it up, you know, keeps reiterating they're going to continue to buy at least $120 billion per month of mortgage-backed securities and treasuries. Um, right now, we've been seeing mortgage-backed securities $40 billion-ish, possibly you know, sometimes more. We've seen more than that. In December, we saw a stupid amount being purchased. Now, that's what's keeping these rates low. They are being they are kept in that position by federal the Federal Reserve buying into that, utilizing treasury money, treasury money coming from us that's being created as in our, in my opinion. I I I don't have enough information as to what they're doing back there. Um, new home sales information came out that it was up 1.6 in December, a little bit lower than expectation, but still but still sales are still up. The inventory went down, um, and the median home price is up eight uh, percent. So. You know, there, there's a little bit of data for you. Uh, as far as the market is concerned, let's see where we are. I'll go ahead and share this screen with you. So we're looking at the, the Fannie Mae 3.0, or excuse me, Universal Mortgage Backed Security 3.0, still up in the upper channel. Look, we're above the resistance, uh, the trend lines. We're, we keep bouncing off that same ceiling, right? So we're fighting our own ceilings of support and resistance. Here's our support. Here's our resistance. We're fighting those ceilings within it. We go into the 2.0, which is where everybody's trying to price your uh, mortgage-backed securities for your owner-occupied properties. You're going to see that that has seen a lot more volatility. Why? Because that's where the money's flowing in and out of. A lot more of it's flowing out of there. It's, it's Darren Chapman's opinion is why we're seeing that versus the 3.0, because the real estate investor is the one drawing from the 3.0, right? Or the people with really, really bad credit. Because um, we're seeing that's where the higher interest rate is, right? Higher risks uh, requires a higher interest rate because you're going to have to build in higher margin for the people lending the money. That's why you get a 3.0 margin, uh, 3.0 uh, return instead of, or 3% return instead of a 2% return. So they built in enough margin to, to attract that money into those pools because of the perceived risk of a real estate investor. So that's why those particular risks, it, it, in my opinion, we don't see the volume going out that we see going out into the other ones because one, think about the loan size. The loan size for a for a their average investor is 80, 90, 100,000. I mean, we're looking at about 100 to 120 in my world. You know, the average loan size out there for the people doing homes for or doing loans for people that are um, buying uh, homes to live in, two to 300,000. I mean, I don't know the exact number right now because I don't track it, but I know it's well over 200,000. Think about that. You can see why those things move at bigger paces because larger chunks are taken out at a time. Now, what does a person do with all this information that we're throwing out here as far as what's going on with interest rates, what I've been packing out to you for the last, oh, since last March when all the, the pandemic hit and the market started to shift significantly, um, you need to figure out what you need to do with it. Knowledge 
you, well, let's let's take this weekend. And I, I'm encouraging my team to do the same thing. Let your take the time this weekend and let your thoughts dwell on the fact that knowledge does not apply itself. Our actions are not governed by knowledge, but by by habit, by actually working with it, doing something, applying that with determined, conscious effort. Think about what you've learned. Think about what you knew. No, make a plan. Quit sitting there stagnant, not wondering what to do. Communicate with people who you're working with to be sure you understand why they're asking what they're asking or, or, or giving you the information that they're giving you. Don't just go off of their ideas or their thought processes or their insights. Understand it for yourself so well that you can act accordingly and then make adjustments to your actions as you need to from what you see and you understand. So have yourself a great weekend. Think on everything you know and really drill down as to what you want to do, what you want to put to work. Go back to the website, AaronBChapman.com, and uh, and I encourage you to scroll down, go to the donate area. And look at that. I don't care if it's a dollar, two dollars. This is a cause we need to be supporting. We've got to end this. Somehow end this. People are being sold for somebody else's benefit. It's sickening and wrong, and we need to change it. Appreciate you guys. I will uh, see you on Tuesday.